Hi class, this is Dr. Shahada and in this video I will be briefly going over a couple of topics in chapter one. So usually in this course I expect you to read the chapter. I provide you with a PowerPoint presentation as, long, as well as a file with the terminology and definitions for the chapter. Then in each week's module, I have a little section where I will cover a couple of topics from the chapter. And in this video, I will also touch on a couple of the slides in your PowerPoint presentation. So your PowerPoint presentation is in much more detail than the information presented in the week's module titled some info from the chapter. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a couple of things and I'm going to do my best to keep this video as short as possible because I know when it gets pretty long, it can uh, get a little boring. All right, so let's get started. So here, the figure that you see are the basic healthcare delivery components. So that's financing, which means to purchase insurance or to pay for healthcare services consumed. Then we have insurance, which is there to protect against catastrophic risk and delivery, where it's to provide healthcare services. And here are different uh, components. Uh, when we're when we say providers, what we mean. And then last is payment. So we're looking at reimbursing providers for services delivered. And that could be through insurance companies, third party domain processors, etc. So just to give you an idea of what the basic delivery of healthcare is. Now I am going and right beneath here, as you can see, I have the definitions right there. Now I'm going to also touch on another um, area here, the external forces affecting healthcare delivery. So in this figure, we're just touching on the different forces that impact our healthcare delivery system. So we have our social values and culture, which definitely impacts our healthcare delivery system. And you can definitely see this when we look in the coming weeks of how our healthcare system and medicine evolved and how our social values and our culture, how we perceived physicians, say in the beginning of the 1800s, how that perception evolved into, you know, from not turning to them um, when needing healthcare services, uh, people were doing more of home remedies and such, and how that slowly changed to where we depend on their opinion when um, we, you know, there's an issue with our health. So it definitely affects um, the whole healthcare delivery system. Next is global influences. So we're looking at immigration, trade and travel, terrorism, epidemics, population characteristics, how that changes. So we're looking at demographic trends and issues, health needs, etc. Also the physical environment. This is sanitation, ecological um, balance and global warming, toxic waste, and definitely technology development. So at the moment, you know, here in the US, we are known for um, very high tech, uh, very high tech medical system, very specialized, and that definitely impacts, um, it's one of the forces that affects healthcare delivery, as well as utilization of healthcare delivery. But in this specific instance, we're talking about healthcare delivery overall. And then economic conditions and political climate, which we've seen um, when elections are coming up and such, how the concept, the, the, the whole um, topic of healthcare delivery 
is constantly brought up and um, it definitely, you know, there is definitely an impact when we're looking at the political climate on healthcare delivery. And we've also seen this with the Affordable Care Act. All right, now I'm gonna be coming back to this page, but now I am going to jump to the PowerPoint uh, slide. So I'm just gonna to touch on a couple of PowerPoint slides that we have in the chapter one um, PowerPoint presentation that I provided to you guys. And, um, but you're gonna make sure after you read the chapter, you're gonna go through it in detail. It's very detailed and very, um, I believe it to be self-explanatory. But of course, if you have any questions at all, be sure to let me know. All right. so. Here are the definitions for a health services delivery system. So it can be broadly defined as major components of the system and processes that enable people to receive health care. And a more restricted definition would be the, the act of providing health care to patients. So example, in a hospital or physician's um, clinic or office. Now, the U.S. healthcare system, a primary feature of the U.S. healthcare system is that it is fragmented. Uh, people obtain healthcare through different means. There's liver standard standard standardization. Sorry, standardization. Um, and the U.S. healthcare system is massive. So over 16 million um, were employed in the year 2009. So usually, the primary objectives of the healthcare delivery system is to enable all citizens to receive healthcare services whenever needed. Example would be universal access and to deliver services that are cost-effective and meet certain pre-established standards of quality. Now, the US healthcare system is unique. It's not a system, it's, there's no universal healthcare financed by taxes, um, no entitlement, no other country operates like the U.S. And the critical issues related have to do, are related to cost, access, and quality. So here um, are the four components of the healthcare system. So, um, I already went through them. It's financing, insurance, delivery, and payment, just like the figure that you just saw. And you need to remember the U.S. healthcare system does not work as a rational and integrated network of components. So these functional components are a mix of private and public sources. So in other words, it's a fu it's functional components of healthcare delivery. It's looked at as a quad functional model. I'm not going to go through and define them again since we've already touched on it, but I did want to mention um, those couple of things. All right. Now I am going to jump to slide number. 39. So the 10 characteristics that differentiate, differentiate the U.S. healthcare system. So the first one is, is that there's no central agency. So most developed nations have a national health care program where every citizen is entitled to receive a set of services or a service. Um, to control costs, they usually use a global budget. Okay, and the government usually controls frequency of health care services especially um, how expensive um, medical technology is. They control the use, how much is actually used in the area of medical technology. The U.S. has mostly private financing and delivery. We do, of course, have our public programs of Medicare, Medicaid, as well as CHIP. But, um, and you'll definitely be reading more about that in the chapter and in the PowerPoint presentation. So here we have private financing through employers at 55% and government at 45. Now, if I am not mistaken, and I am gonna go back and check this out, sorry about that. 
I think this is supposed to be 53% and this should be 47. I will be changing that, okay? And the following um, slide continues with the no central agency um, characteristic. So we have private health care, uh, hospitals, physicians are independent of the government. No one monitors total expenses through global budgets and utilization here in the U.S. And the U.S. does determine public sector expenses, again, when we're talking about reimbursement rates for Medicare, Medicaid. And CHIP is also included in that group. Governments um, set standards of participation through policy and regulations. This is, of course, when we're looking at um, government-funded programs, again, Medicare, Medicaid, as well as CHIP, providers must comply with standards to be certified to provide Medicaid and Medicare patients, and um, they are regarded as minimum standards of quality. Another characteristic here in the U.S. is we have partial access. So when we're talking about access, universal access, we're talking about healthcare is available to everyone. Access in general, um, a general or broad definition, is the ability to obtain health care when needed. So when we're looking at partial access, um, here in the U.S., access is restricted. So to those who have health insurance through an employer, they're covered under a government health care plan, they're able to buy insurance out of pocket, they can pay at uh, time of service privately, that's another option. And of course, health insurance helps ensure access. Okay, the next slide. Again, with partial access. So those unable to pay, wait until a health problem arises, then receives health care at an emergency room. So that has to do with that overutilization of the ER. Hospital does not receive payment, a form of catastrophic health care insurance, question mark, um, you know, if you have that. Primary care is basic and routine care, and lack of access to primary care is a big reason for um, the U.S. is lag in population health, and we're looking at our health outcomes. They're not as high as they should be. Third is an imperfect market. So, when we're talking uh, about an imperfect market here, um, a free market is really based on a supply and demand, right? So with a free market, you know, the forces of supply and demand are what bases um, the prices of services and such. All right, so, as I said before, it is um, usually in a free market. It's the supply and demand forces that affect the price of healthcare services. But here in the U.S., we have a an imperfect market. Um, the economic markets, uh, you know, do not exist. Private healthcare. There's consolidating, forming alliances, and integrating delivery systems. Um, networks of healthcare organizations that are not, um, they're not driven by these free market conditions. Now, the U.S. has a quasi-market, as I mentioned before, so it's partially managed by free markets. And when we're looking at free markets, <clears throat> first, in any market we're looking at in healthcare, patients are the buyers and the providers are the sellers. And this case with a free market, they would act independently and prices would be completely set by the interaction of free market forces of supply and demand. Unrestrained competition on basis of price and quality. So here's some more information regarding a free market. So patients must have information of the availability of different services, which that would be in a free market, but such information is difficult to obtain because technology-driven medical care has become so highly sophisticated. Um, patients have information on price and quality on each provider. That is actually, obviously, in our healthcare system, especially with health insurance, is not the case. Uh, patients must bear cost of services received 
and patients make decisions about the purchase of healthcare services, which is, is true in that case. So this is where you see that partial free market coming out. Um, again, here we're saying patients have information on um, each provider, they bear costs. Oh, I already went through this one, so let's go through a little further down. Slide 50, so there's item pricing. Um, you obtain fees charged for the surge, for the service, such as your surgeon's price. Services can't be determined prior to the procedure, um, which is true. And if anyone has had um, a health care uh, or a, a health issue that needed to be addressed, a surgery or such, you would have noticed that. Uh, <clears throat> package pricing bundled fee for a group of related services and capitation all healthcare services include one set fee per person more all encompassing all right and then we have our bill for services separately you have your anesthesiologist pathologist supplies now these are the phantom providers okay and i just found that actual term, whoever coined it to be um, an interesting one. But uh, these are the phantom providers, so they're not necessarily, you know, as visible as, say, your surgeon or your, phys your primary care physician or whatever phys physician you had um, seen. And the supplier provider induced demand so physicians have an influence on creating demand for their financial benefit. Physicians receive care beyond, you know, they may give care um, that's beyond what is necessary. And sometimes you'll have extra follow-up visits, tests, unnecessary uh, surgery. And these are, um, you know, depending on the supplier and provider induced demand, the amount of leeway. All right, so third party insurers and multiple payers. So we're looking at insurance, commercial insurance companies, or managed care organizations. Um, they become an intermediary function. These interme intermediary functions result in higher administrative costs. The U.S. has many payers. Com a company can choose different plans, um, a billing and collection nightmare and the system becomes very cumbersome. Single payer system is a national healthcare system that is usually the primary payer, um, which is usually the government. And this we've seen in uh, many other countries other than the US, an example would be Canada and a lot of European countries. Now, power balancing. So the balancing of power among various players prevents any single entity from dominating the system. So we have multiple players here. We're looking at physicians, administration, insurance, government, employers. And then we have fragmented self-interest. So we're looking at um, self-interest that prevents an entity from dominating. Then the legal actions that lead to the practice of defensive medicine. And this is where you'll, you'll find practitioners prescribing diagnostic tests, uh, return checkups, and extra documentation. Now, the development of new technology creates this an automatic demand for its use. So the U.S. is a hotbed when uh, regarding research and innovations in the area of medicine. Again, it creates a demand for these services to be used with capital investments must have utilization and legal risks for providers denying a uh, new technology come into play. Now, the continuum of services. So uh, new service settings have evolved along a continuum. So we have three broad categories here, curative, restorative, and preventative. And healthcare is uh, not confined to the hospital. So if you check out uh, table one, two in your textbook, you'll see examples of that. 
and the quest for quality. So quality is no longer accepted as an unachievable goal in the delivery of healthcare. So we're looking at continuous quality uh, improvement, higher expectations, and quality standards with compliance. So that covers the 10 characteristics that differentiate the US healthcare system and on the page info from the chapter that's found in this module, in, in this week's module, covers that topic very briefly just by listing them. Now I'm gonna jump to the trends in the US healthcare system. So give me a second here. And, uh, oops, sorry. So trends in the U.S. healthcare system. So this is look at the trends and directions in healthcare delivery. And it is showing these shifts that are occurring. So instead of um, medicine being focused on illness and just the treatment of illness, we're slowly shifting to wellness. It's changing from acute care to primary care. Inpatient care and you see the shift going on to outpatient care, which I'm sure um, you've seen on a personal level when accessing healthcare here in the US. Um, instead of individual health, we're, we're shifting to community well being. And we see this a lot going on in the area of public health, and as well as when we're addressing viruses um, that we've seen, you know. Um, kind of turn into epidemics or even on a pandemic level. Uh, an example would be Ebola, um, even the Zika virus, where we start focusing on the community's well-being and we're not looking at only individual cases. Um, again, looking at fragmented care, slowly seeing the shift to managed care, care, a more integrated system, which leads us to the following one. Uh, independent institutions. And then last, service du duplication. And we see the shift going on to a continuum of services. So the promotion of health has been the driving force behind these trends. The aim has been changing from illness to wellness. And then the last area I want to touch on is just to touch on national healthcare system structures. So there's three different ones that are addressed in the textbook that I also wanted to touch on in this video. And then that will be a wrap. All right, so let's see here. All right, so there's three different healthcare system, national healthcare system structures that are covered in the chapter. First is NHI, which is National Health Insurance. We also have National Health System, which I'll be also defining, and that's found in Great Britain. Um, NHI is found in Canada. And last would be a socialized health insurance, which is found in Germany, Israel, and Japan. So let's begin with the National Health Insurance uh, System. So the government finances healthcare through general taxes, but the actual care is delivered by private pro providers. So you have the delivery, which is categorized by detached private arrangements and requires tighter consolidation of financing, insurance, and payment functions. Of course, all coordinated by the government. Then the National Health System, an example, it's used in Great Britain, and the government manages the infrastructure for the delivery of medical care in addition to financing a tax-supported um, NHI program. So the government operates most of the medical institutions, and NHS requires a tighter consolidation of all four functional components. Remember what those four functional components are, financing, insurance, delivery, and payment, um, that make up the quad functional model. All right, and then the socialized health insurance uh, system. So the government mandated contributes, so I'm sorry, this healthcare system, it's financed through the government, mandated uh, contributions by employers and employees. Healthcare is delivered by private providers. And this kind of stru uh, system structure um, is actually found in Germany, Israel, and Japan. 
Oh, there we go. Um, again, finance through government mandated contributions. Healthcare is delivered by private providers. Finance through government mandated contributions by employers and employees. And healthcare is delivered by private providers. And that, oh, and there is one more here. So private, not for private, uh, not for profit insurance companies. Uh, they're called sickness funds and they collect and pay physicians and hospitals. So be sure to go through the rest of the slides in this PowerPoint uh, presentation. I just wanted to touch on a couple. And of course, if you have any questions on any of them, do not hesitate to let me know or anything that was covered in this video. Let me, I am going to jump back to um, the page that has the information from the chapter that's found in this week's module. All right, so we are back here. I am going to scroll through the main characteristics of the U.S. healthcare system. We have one through that. The number of forces that shape the basic character of the health service uh, delivery system, we touched that above. And then the healthcare systems of other countries. Again, this is a brief overview. It's more in detail earlier in this video. So that wraps it up. If you have any questions at all, be sure to let me know and take care. Bye.